license. You man, you, you man snaked me, so. <laughs> nah, 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 I don't snake you, man. Fred mm-hmm. started it, fam. He made me feel some type of way. You're no, no, no. Trim, and I'm out here looking like... Uh, hobo. I showed show Louie to my barber. I went to my barber. <laughs> Miss me? I went to the shop. You came to my house. Oh shit! Driving this up to the wheels fall, fam. I'm following Boris's rules. Yeah. Remember, Jay. Black hair matters. Black hair <laughs> matters. <laughs> Support your black barbers, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Well, are we all following Boris's rules here? Yeah? Yeah. He had the new rule no. he made up the other day. What? Yeah. That's the other rule he made up the other day. Well, that you can't be outside your household. Yeah. Nonsense. How are they going to police that, idiot? I don't even... <laughs> that's stupid. <laughs> <clears throat> that is... That's, that's utterly idiotic. How are they going to know? How? They just talk... They just waffle, bro. They just waffle. They just waffle. They just waffle. No, no. Is that even real, though? Or is that something... Is that fake news? Some stupidness, something like some technicality. I thought it kind of meant in it, but geez. even the whole thing of going to people's how are they going to police that? How are they going to police that? Well, you can look, you can, but you can meet up in a park go. with actually six people from a different household, right? <laughs> they just waffle for the sake of waffling. I swear, they don't know what they do, but yeah, anyways, what's the man I'm saying? No. They are. Yeah, dying with hay people, bro. Hay people. Even today, bro. Mm-hmm. Hey, Even today, bro. I'm glad I don't have hay fever. I don't know. I wish I could know, bro. Some name, bro. No. Yeah, that's wrong stuff. Mm-hmm. What are we saying, though, man? No. Nah, it's been a... Uh, we, got, we got some... Busy couple of weeks. Hectic two... I say, what, two, three and a half weeks? Will it be that long? We ain't filmed in two weeks, I guess. Come up to three. Come up to three. Yeah, it's come up to three and a lot has happened. Definitely a lot has happened. A lot has happened, man. The world world is going mad right now. Everyone's everyone's writing, everyone's standing up, everyone's protesting. Enough is enough, man, I guess. Yeah, man. So I suppose it's only right that we use this episode to kind of address what's going on. Um, obviously, what's going on in the US. And to also just address how it affects us here in the UK. Um, obviously, it's slightly different here, but, you know, it affects us the same way. So, yeah, man, it's, we use this episode to just to just talk about all of that, man. Um, and, yeah, just get our views out there, because I think... This is one of them topics that we don't really speak about a lot. Like, and we only tend to speak about it when shit happens. Um, and I think we need to kind of get out of that and only, you know, we only march when someone dies. You know what I mean? And it seems like it's a thing where are they ever going to take us seriously if we only do it when someone literally dies? You know what I mean? So... But I think a lot of people are realizing that like, this has to be something that has to continue, and it's not something that we just do. It's the basis, isn't it? So, um, but yeah, man. <clears throat> what is you lot's take on the whole? I don't know. Let's talk. Let's talk about the whole George Floyd one. What, how, what's you lot's take been on that? How has it affected you? What are, what are your thoughts on it? Um, to a certain, to be honest with you, it's not the first time we've seen it happen, is it? Mm. we've been especially from America we've been seeing people being killed on camera mm. whether it be body cams from the police officers whether it be phone cameras we've been watching people being shot yeah. brutalized I mean it, it's a never ending cycle especially over there it's not mm. so prevalent here or not so in the media here mm. but over there is something that happened so when I saw it I'll be honest with you it didn't necessarily invoke the emotion that it invoked in a lot of people because I feel it happens so regular over there that you almost become a little bit desensitized mm. to seeing it. Mm. You understand? Like yeah. it's not a shock anymore. Yeah. So for me, I, I, I do agree it's sad and I looked at it and I thought, right, like this can't keep going on. But 
it was just one of another one of their cases of someone being killed on camera for me yeah it, yeah it, it almost gets to the point like you said like this has been happening so it's just like what like, what's really changing this has been happening for years upon years upon years of police officers killing unarmed people you know what i mean it's the way how he got killed it, it more looked like a modern day lynching like you know we when we, we see the the beatings we see the shootings and whatnot to actually watch a man put his knee on a man's neck with his hands in his pocket comfortably just lying on a man hearing a man screaming i can't breathe hearing him scream for his mum i think it involved a different emotion as in this has just gone too far now man like cool you shoot us not i mean as in cool you bit, but you, sh- you shot us beating us but to now like physically kneel on a man's neck with your hands in your pocket you know that at some point you're cutting out his breathing supply and you watch that video the whole nine minutes clip of that video you hear people screaming he's not breathing he's not moving check his pulse check his pulse and this guy is just comfortably lying on his neck it's painful to watch that could, that could have been even though it's in america that could have been one of our uncles or a family member whatever it's got something weird like, nah man this is just gone too far now you get me like that was so unnecessary uncalled for so i think americans are fed up and then you look at it um, not to sound racist, but a white man kneeling down on a black man's neck. And you get a man like Cop- um, Kaepernick that lost his job for kneeling down against the flag. Just the similarities is just like raw. So a man gets, a man gets his career thrown away for kneeling down and gets something he doesn't believe in. But then a white man kneels down on a black man's neck and kills him. And then at first, you know, if noise wasn't made, this guy would probably still be working, you know. And obviously, they've made a lot of noise, and, you know. He's been charged with second-degree murder. The other the other cops have been charged with whatnot, whatnot. But, you know, that's still not enough, man. There's still other cases out there. There's still other people that's been killed. But I think that one just moved me to hear a grown-ass man cry out for his mum. That's a lot, you know. That's what, and he weren't no small guy, you know, that's a, that, that was a poor black man, you know. Mm. Yeah, because he was, you know, built. And he's still doing poor things, man. That's modern day lynching, man. That's, 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 that's just killing black people, right? For, it's like, it's like now, you know, what you're trying to say is we're a public show, we can be killed on display. That's basically the message it kind of looked like. But that, but that's the thing that just goes back to slavery times. That's the way it was. Remember, lynchings were whole day events back then. You understand? You used to, you know, like a picnic. That's where the term comes from. You understand? Like they used to celebrate this. Oh, let's all view it and watch it. And you understand? And there's a lot of arguments to say, why didn't anyone that was there even attempt to help? Which to me, that would have just resulted in more dead people. What, um, at the scene? At the scene, it would have just resulted in more dead people. Because they would have shot them. They would have shot them. They would have shot them. And, you know, as much as, you know, they say, you know, racism, what's the saying? Racism is no longer... What's the Will Smith saying? It's now on camera, basically. Yeah, it's not new. It's just on... It's being filmed. It's being filmed. Yeah. In, in the, the saddest part of that, that was actually the best thing to happen in that situation because had there been no footage of that, yeah, it would just got swept away like all the other cases. Look at the other one where they, um, what's his name, Aubrey, the, the guy that killed yeah. jogging. Yeah. Like that, like, you're telling me a man jogging, you get killed for jogging through a neighborhood. It's just like showing like, there's 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 a lot more that needs to to be done. Um, I don't know whether it's education 
But right now, people are rioting and so it be in it, you know. You get me, there's a protest going on today, and I hope it remains peaceful. But you know, if it goes out of hand, then you're right, you're right. You know, and that's enough, man. You get me, you know, and that's enough. Even when we look down here, man, there's cases that still ain't been, you know, so have been, I should say, thrown up down here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a sad thing, man. I mean, yeah. even just, just obviously listening to you about how you felt when you was watching the video, I imagine I haven't even, I haven't even seen the video. And I literally don't want to see the video. Like, I don't like watching those things, innit? I'd rather read about it or someone tell me about it, but I don't want to... I don't want to watch it because I feel like the whole watching thing, it has a negative impact on you mentally. Like when you're constantly mm -hmm. being shown brutality towards black people, like mentally that can fuck you up. And it's even one of the tactics that they use in slavery. They will make you stand there and watch while they're beating a man, just so that it mentally scars you. And I feel like when we're spreading these videos, like, I'm very cautious about what I watch. I don't watch them because I know the effects of what these things can have. It even gets to the point where even certain movies, I don't watch them. 12 Years a Slave, ask me if I've seen it. I don't watch them. I already know the story. I already know what happened because I've heard about it. I've read about it. I don't then need to go and watch it physically seeing this man being mistreated. I don't need to physically then go and watch. What's the other one? When They See Us about the, the youths in the park. I ain't seen that either. I ain't seen that one. I, don't, I know the story, I know what happened. I don't then need to put myself through the emotional madness of watching it. And I feel like the people who should be watching those things are white people. They should be watching those things because they need to understand what the fuck is going on. I feel like us watching it is detrimental to our mental health and it can almost trigger PTSD just from watching these things constantly. 100%. And a lot of people aren't stable enough to understand that they're watching a movie. Some people actually go outside and take act, um take things into their own hands. Because mm. I remember when I watched, you know, as far back, like school days, when you watch Roots. Yeah. And I'm like, hold on. Could you know that's your first real, like, view of what... Just, it's the slavery, the slavery film you watch. Yeah, 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 so when I saw that, I'm saying, hold on, what's going on here? Mm. And when you watch it, you kind of look at the white you in your class like, go on, say something. Go yeah. on. <laughs> you do it. And I'm saying that, though, as much as that is a level of ignorance as well, yeah. it can, if you're not stable enough or secure enough within yourself, these things can incite you to go and do a madness. Yeah. yeah. Just by watching them, which it clearly has to a lot of people. Just like you, I haven't, I've seen clips of the video. I never watched the full nine minutes. No. I saw the initial and then I saw you know like the clips that they put out where they were carrying him into the ambulance and all of this yeah. stuff mm -hmm. but I haven't seen the entire you know ordeal mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not on it man. I'm not on it man. you know I'm kind of with Jay on this one I don't I don't think it's necessary for me to watch like I know what's happened I know he's dead I know he was kneeling on his neck I don't need to see him transition from being able to speak to being unable to move Mm. No, 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 I, I, and I agree. You know, I, I, and I watched it because I just I just wanted to see that. Right. Yeah, of course. Was there any? Did, did, was there any remorse shown? And no, nah, no, no, no fucks given. And it's mad when you look at America. Like what? Rodney King was nineteen ninety one. I was like, what? One years old at the time. And you're trying to tell me almost twenty nine years later they're still going through the same thing. And Rodney King was obviously lucky to fight his, his case and tell his story. Yep. But you're trying to tell me, nearly 30 years later, what are you trying to say? These people shouldn't survive, so we're not going to make them tell their story. And look at what was the other guy, um, Eric Gardner. He was like six foot seven. Yeah. And they choked him down like... Nah, man, it, it's, it's nuts, man. It's just like, you should tell me, if anything, in 30 years, there's been no systematic change. If anything, they're going back into time. Well, you have to understand, in a country where you can elect someone like Donald Trump, yeah, you also have to look at the mentality of the country as a whole. Mm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, if you can elect someone like him, who is known for something like grabbing women by the pussy 
like something like that. He's known for this stuff. Mm. And that's who they put into power. You can't expect the white people's behavior to be any different. Do you understand? Because to elect him shows that a majority of people believe in how he moves and thinks along the same wavelength as him. Mm. So this is what it's going to be. And you're saying 30 years, but that's the 30 years of your life. Yeah, and that's you not, understand? Yeah. And remember, these things have been happening. Remember, slavery was mm. over 400 years in itself. Oh, these things mm. happening. Slavery itself was 400 years. Mm. And then after that, what's been happening before it even hit your 30 years of life? You understand? It's so it's a pattern of behavior that is continuous. And to be honest with you, things will change. I have very much hope that things will change, but they're not going to change in the speed in which it will be beneficial for even our generation. Mm. You understand? So right now it's about implementing changes or helping to implement changes that will affect our children and grandchildren. Because mm. mm. we're in our 30s now. I, it's taken 30 years and we're still seeing people get killed on camera. Yeah? Mm. All that's going to happen now, to be brutally honest, is they're going to become more ingenious about the way they kill us. Right. In order to not get caught. Because right. they, they're now noticing, right, you see the blatant thing? We're losing a bit of power here because we're getting in trouble. Mm. All right. So now we're just going to kill you lot in secret, mm. which they've been doing. Don't get me wrong. They've been yeah, doing all these. All drive-bys are not done by black on black. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. call me a conspiracy theorist, but there's, I believe in the whole organ harvesting and people going missing and all of these things. This has been happening. These are the secret killings. It's real. So mm -hmm. all that's going to happen is they know, all right, everyone's filming us. Fine. We are now going to kill you in secret. Or we're going to make it look like you killed each other or you killed yourself. Or mm -hmm. We're going to find other ways of doing this, but it's never going to stop because their mission is to eradicate us as a nation, as a race. Yeah. They, I mean, they, want, they can't do it, though. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a continuous mission of trying to eradicate something that keeps reproducing. Mm -hmm. You got to, you got to just look at just the the foundations and what they were built on. It's never been about us. It's always been to keep us in a certain position. It's always been like that. The police, just, just even the police itself, they were never set up to protect us, serve the people. They were set up originally to catch runaway slaves and to protect mm -hmm. slave owners property that's what they were originally set up for so they've never been there for us they've been there to keep us in place never to protect us to keep us in place and return us back to where we were went to be and that was in the slave fields now instead of the slave fields it's just the prison isn't it? that's where they return us back that's that's what the question i've got is do you not believe then that for us to implement change right that we need to have people we need to put people or encourage people to go into positions where they can help implement that change i.e encourage people from our own community to get into maybe not police officer but to be in that world in order to help implement a change because from the outside you say now the three of us we don't know how to implement that change in there. We don't have the power to do so. Mm. But if we had someone that represented us in that realm, even if it was just a word, mm. they would at least be able to say something. Do you understand? Yeah, I think we do. But then at the same time, I think we don't necessarily have to always have someone in a particular place. For example, um, let's look at like, say like Jeremy Corbyn, for instance, yeah? Mm. He more or less had the black vote without mm. having to do much. Mm. I feel like we need to start holding these men accountable for our vote. What are you, when you're in power, what policies have you written? We want to see what policy you've got in place that's going to benefit us because the Jews do it, the LGBTQ community do it. They will go mm. to the politicians and say, you're not getting our vote until you tell us what you're going to do for us. When you but, do you, us, we'll vote for you. but do you not think they've got direct representation? Like there are, for they example... Do gay politicians that will fight their cause they do but still 
even if they don't, you're not getting our vote. The same way we can say to Jeremy Corbyn or whoever it is we vote for, we're not voting for you. You're not getting our our backing until you tell us exactly. But do you not feel like it's because well, they are more unified? Like, for example, if you're part of the LGBTQ community, you have a unified mission. So whether you're black, white, male, mm-hmm. female, transgender, regardless of what you are, we, we have all a want this thing. Whereas, mm-hmm. I feel like we as black people, we're getting better, but we're very disorganized everyone's like everyone's got their own personal agenda not to say that Mm -hmm. it's not all part of the bigger issue but we've all got this agenda like one person wants this Mm -hmm. and there's a set of people that want that so when we're going and they say so what do you want if Mm -hmm. you put 10 people there we're all saying yeah we're all saying something different yeah Mm -hmm. we're not fighting like a unified cause if that makes sense you understand what i'm saying whereas the jews they are fighting for the jews that's it that's it. There's no other talking. That's what it is. Mm. LGB, that's the biggest thing. The, 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 the LGBTQ community, they fight for them. So if one of them gets harmed, regardless of which one it is, it's an issue. It's an issue. You don't hear that they're killing each other. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Mm. But you're not hearing that they're riding out against each other. Because they're, they're, they're seemingly just trying to survive. Mm. Whereas we seem unorganized, we don't have a unified voice. And I think once we do have a unified, a unified voice, we're saying what well, we need that uni- uni- we need voices like they have in the states. With, uh, All right, prime example. Yeah, I'll give an example. Mm-hmm. The Montgomery bus boycott. Yeah, old school. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. They made a decision that every black person was not going to get on the bus for one year. Until they changed their policy, no one was getting on the bus. Mm. And nobody did it. It was one voice. We're not talking about nothing else. We are not getting on this bus until you sort it out. Mm. And they added additional rules. They said you couldn't carpool with people that didn't live in the same house as you and all of these things. Everyone walked everywhere until a change was made. They had one unified voice. Mm. But at that time, they also had leaders that they followed, whether it be Martin Luther King, whether it be Malcolm X. They had leaders that they followed. Whereas now, we don't have a singular leader that we're like, yeah, you see that person there? We're riding with them. Mm. Everyone is trying to be a leader. Everyone's trying to speak at the same time. It's all getting a bit too much. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think we do need to just, you know, sit down. Like I said, we're just sort of, because obviously there's a lot of people out there who are for the people and speak for the people. But whether they're, those leaders are coming together and sitting down and saying, all right, how can we pull my resources with your resources and sit down and come devise a plan and say, this is what we want as a people. And then we just concentrate on that and ride out for that. Because I was having a conversation, um, not even having a conversation, I was watching a video um, of uh, David Banner mm. yesterday. And he was like, our single problem is that we're trying to do too much. We're here, we're there, we're, we're like, let's, like, this is a war. And wars are not won by fighting multiple battles at the same time. You fight one battle, you win, you move on to the next battle, so forth, so forth, until the war is done. But right now, we're just all over the place and we're not going to win like that. We need to fight one battle at a time. Fight one, win one, and once we win one, that feeling of winning is like, rah, we've done something. Let's move on to the next thing now. And, but we're just all over the place right now. You're right. But do you think this is a... You see the war that we're trying to fight now because we're going against the government and that's basically what it is. We're going against a system that has been in place for the better part of a thousand years, minimum, yeah? So do you feel like, as much as we need to unify under this one mission, do you think it's something that we are even going to be able to pull those resources to, to battle? Because... I'll be honest, me personally, I, I don't know what steps need to be taken to go against a government. I don't know. I mean, the most obvious one is money. Mm-hmm. Money. And infrastructure. We don't have no infrastructure. That's, I think that's our main example. We have no infrastructure. We have nothing that we can really say. Oh. So, like, if shit did get on top and 
you know, we did want to just say, you know what, ban Asda, ban Tesco, ban Sirius, ban all you lot. Where are we getting our food from? We're all good when it comes to getting trims and getting hair done and buying garments, but just something basic like food. What are we, how are we going to survive if we're going to try and boycott these, these big brands? How, how is it going to happen? Do we don't have a black Costco or a black... Do we have hospitals? Do we have banking? We don't, we, we don't have our own bank. Nothing. In America, they do. Here, we don't. Here, we don't. Um, we don't have any real infrastructure. Here. But one thing I will say is if you look at other races around the world, they have the backing of their homeland mm. that we don't necessarily have. Do you understand? If you violate or kill enough Chinese people, the Chinese government from their country, they can contact them in order to back them. Do you understand? Whether it be finances or whatever, they can contact them. Mm. We, we don't have that backing of the lands that we originate from. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. So we're here land. in a foreign land. We're here in a foreign land, but mm. we don't have the backing. So 15, 20, 50 of us are killed. They're not coming over to ride. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's, mm. just, that's, not, that's not happening. That's so that's a big problem as well. Mm. That's what they feel with the nephew. I'll say it again, bro. Because what you were trying to do in Africa was your create a system like a bank where you put your money in here. You didn't want that to happen. So what did they what did their their men do? They turn people against them. But this is the thing, no, but there's what I'm trying to say to you is I understand with the Gaddafi point, but you see like all right, Prince, you're Ghanaian, yeah? Mm. You see if something happened to a hundred Ghanaians, right? Mm -hmm. Could you not you personally, but could you as a Ghanaian go back to contact in Ghana and be like, listen, this is what they're doing and they're going to come and say, listen, this is what you're doing to our brothers and sisters elsewhere, then we're not, we're cutting off all trade of this or we're stopping this or is there a power system that is willing to back you? There'll, there'll be a form of contact, like what they did in China, there'll be a form of contact, but I don't feel that they have the power enough to say, oh, we're going to stop supplying you because... I think Ghana the biggest uh, chocolate producers are oh, we're gonna stop supplying you chocolate for a period. I don't think that's cocoa, sorry. I don't think we're gonna But do you understand other here. countries they have that backing of their government to say yeah, yeah, they we have are their... willing to, to sacrifice yeah. ourselves because you're not treating our brothers and sisters around the yeah, world. Yeah, because correctly. they 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 will they will turn around and say, Well, uh, we're gonna stop trading with you for a period of time. I'm not giving you no 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 sugar cane or whatever which will the infrastructure of the country that is set to be so 100%. I don't think Ghana's got the, I no disrespect to Ghana or anything, I don't think they've got the palette, the power to pull such a stunt like that. But I'm not saying Ghana in particular, I'm saying we as black people, we all descend from Africa. So at the end of the day, if they're mistreating us in America, even if it's they, us plus our motherland. Mm -hmm is a lot more power because we're combining. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it seems like we're very separated. Even, even if, for example, your parents are from there or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. we're still so far removed from our motherland that we don't have a connection to them, especially as West Indians. Mm -hmm. We don't have that direct connection. We don't have a mother tongue. We don't have none of that. So we, we're so disconnected that we're literally like two separate sets of people. Whereas I feel like if we could pull everything, not just our power over here and in America, but from where we actually descend from, that would make a much greater impact. Do you think everything is down to education? Don't you feel that the lack of education, especially when you look at the educational system in this country in terms of like how the way black history is portrayed? Because there's no education to, to teach you all of that thing. You're basically self teach yourself that. Even you basically, mm -hmm. as the older you get, you you take the time out and go understand who I'm mm -hmm. yeah. And when I think back to you know Black History Month when I was in school, it was a whole lot of bollocks education, fam. You're teaching me the slave trade, and you're happy teaching me that oh they stole cotton and they stole sugarcane and they they sold black people. Like you know, teach the effects that it's had. Do you know, teach the 
realness of what it is. Don't teach about the Bermuda Triangle. To, uh, to, to, to teach the effects of it would have would mean they are taking ownership of what they've done. So they can't teach you the effects of something that they are not willing to accept that they have done and are still doing. So remember, they have to have accountability. In order to teach someone the entirety of something, you have to take accountability for what you've done in it, and which they're not to, willing to do. Then you have to fucking show us roots in school. The to to, to in school. be honest, even, like, I don't even, they don't even need to teach us that shit. Like, they don't even need don't. to teach us that shit. Yeah, I'm all right on that. I'm, I don't, don't teach it. Now, if, you, uh, if you're going to teach the truth, don't teach it at all, innit? Don't, don't teach me some washed-down version to make it sound like, you know, oh... It happened, and it happened 400 years ago. Like, it fucking stayed happening. Nah, man, don't, don't teach me that. No, don't even teach me. Like, my new thing is now is, like, bro, education happens at home. School is just meant to be a bonus. It's just a bonus. So I feel like there's certain things that you go, think, think about it. You go to school, half the mm-hmm. shit you learn, you don't use. You don't use half of that. That's true. So that is, all mm-hmm. that knowledge is basically bonus information. Yeah. All the yeah. real shit you should be, you should be taught at home. Savings, your history, you know, um, anything that they don't teach us in school, it should be taught at home. It's as, it's as simple as that. That's that's how I look at it now. Like, I mean, you you know when you look at these um, Jewish schools, Arab schools, Asian schools, the stuff that we want to, they want us, we want to be teaching in school. They taught, they taught savings. They taught us start a business. They they thought about their their history and X, Y, and Z. Um, probably that's why they they kind of excel when they step out of the educational system because their brain is because they is in filled with so much of so much realness that by the time they step into the real world and it's like they're gone. It's, you know, they it's, teach uh, them they teach them things that are going to benefit their community. Them, yeah. So like, schools don't you, teach us stuff that benefit. They teach us stuff that's going to benefit their community. They teach us to become good citizens and to go work for their companies. That's what they teach us in school. So, so I'm gonna dive into because you know, Mr. Umar is my guy. Do you feel that we need a black school? We need something. Honestly, I think we need something. I think we do. I think we need to start. I think, especially if we're just talking about here. I mm-hmm. think we would, we would benefit from something even as, you know, like... Saturday school. Saturday school. Saturday school. Oh, you see that? Remember they, we used to have youth clubs? Saturday school back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, right. Saturday have, school. Yeah. Wilson High Saturday school. Yeah. All right. So we, used, we had Saturday schools. We used to have youth clubs. Mm-hmm. I feel like even if, as you said, we could have a Saturday school set up and just say this is where we teach, like, black history, pan-African, mm-hmm. like... Saturday school because mm. remember our history is in direct contradiction to the national curriculum but. right so for when we teach our kids that stuff at, at home when they go to school and speak up even though they're not being rude or they're not being out of place because it's in direct contradiction with the curriculum they are now going to be seen as troublemakers mm. right so we need a whole separate environment where they can release this in a safe environment mm. and still and, and learn, do you understand? So a Saturday school would be perfect. I don't think even a whole school is necessary right now. Mm. Something as small as a Saturday school or, Wonders. or Wonders. classes, yeah. like it would be perfect. 100%. I, I, I agree with that. And um, like, just even like, obviously, we spoke a lot about the whole police brutality in in um in America and I just I don't want us to miss the fact as well that bruv these these UK feds ain't innocent bruv they're just as bad they're just not doing it with guns you get me like to see how the way um George Floyd died mm-hmm. they put plenty man like that over here you know look at the uh, the you um in uh, what's his name it's it's in the cost the same thing kneeling mm-hmm. in, the, in the back of his head Mm. Same thing. But, but, but for years, man, have been dying in custody. That's why even yeah. uh, more locally, the the police oh. station at the top of Church Road, Housing Police Station. That's why they mm. can't hold prisoners anymore. Easy. It was it's purely for information. Mm-hmm. Just as bad, they just do it more <clears throat> covertly, and that's just the UK in general. They go about yeah. their shit so covertly. Like, nothing that you, nothing never gets. Just look at the fact that 
how many of them were slave owners without having slave fields in the UK? Yeah. They did their shit. They went and done their shit. Elsewhere. Elsewhere, covertly. No one knew. They were just get, raking in money, sitting at home in London or in England. Raking I saw, in some, I saw some post the other day saying that um, the UK taught the American slavery anyway. Of course they did. They, they went over there. The Americans are English, you know. Remember they yeah. like, ran away from England to go sit up in, in, in America. When they, 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 they went to go, they took the... Bad. Took the land from the the Red Indians. But Europeans went around the world to conquer. That's where it is. Because remember, their land is very, very small Mm. in comparison. Mm -hmm. So that's what they did. They went around and they used religion Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. weapons to conquer. Mm -hmm. That's what they did. You understand? All these countries, you've got like French-speaking countries, Portuguese-speaking countries... Because the Europeans, they just went around the world and conquered. Mm. So, oh. of course, England is equally as, uh, must be held accountable as equally as America. Yeah. But as, as Jay said, they're just a lot more discreet with it. Remember, mm. England itself is a lot more of a reserved country. Mm. Everything here is relatively quiet in mm-hmm. comparison to America. Mm. So it's never going to seem as extreme. Because a lot of people are like, but English feds don't even carry guns, so it's not the same. No. They do a lot. There is a lot of gun police out here. There is. A lot of men have been killed <laughs> by feds. Yeah. Mark Duggan. You know what I mean? It happens. So, I, you know, when they have that, it happens here. It's just that it's not blatant here. It's very, very covert. They always yeah. have a way to like, oh, it was because of this. Oh, do you get that? They're so covert. Like, they're very, very dangerous. Very dangerous here. It happens. It happens. It happens. It happens, man. Um, what's his name? Rashawn Charles. Same thing. He was arrested and they had his knee in, his, in, his, in the back of his neck. Mm-hmm. Like, same way. These men have been doing it. And apparently that, that move is sanctioned in the UK. It's an actual move they teach them in the academy. Yeah, to keep you so, under control, yeah. They know that. Well, knee in the neck. Yeah, mm. they know that it could lead it to... Kinda, because it immobilises you, because it, it uh, limits your movement stop, and yeah. your breathing. Yeah. But they're supposed to use it if you are they're supposed being to use resistant. It. Right. If you're being resistant, they put do that to almost immobilise you so they can handcuff you and they're meant to stop. But also, they support, they know, again, they're meant to know that if, you, if he says, I cannot breathe, or you can see that a man is supposed to ease mm. up, the youth that died in the shop, I think they said, they, obviously it was filmed, didn't it? And apparently you could hear him witnessing, you could hear him saying, I can't breathe no more. And they, the, guess what the feds said? They said they thought he was yawning. They thought he was yawning. None of them have been charged. They thought he nah, was None breathing. of them, so they're still fighting yeah. justice for that one day. They thought he was yawning. So a man is saying, I can't breathe, choking, breaths going, and they're thinking he's yawning. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Like these, these, the UK, the UK police are not innocent. Listen. To license it.